Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. We are waking up with watches and everything you see here is in stock and for sale. Reach out to me. I am still T Masso at thewatchbox.com to buy, trade, or sell. We love to buy watches, always looking to boost inventory. Sell us one watch, sell us an entire collection. No upper limit on value paid. We pay cash, we pay fast, we walk you through the process and make it a no-brainer. We will buy your entire collection today. Alternatively, trade us a watch you're not wearing for one that you will to buy a trader sell i'm the man t masso at the watchbox.com all right let's look back to 2021 when patek philippe launched one of two candidates for the title of patek's best all-around watch now the original 5905 annual calendar flyback chronograph came out in platinum on a strap for 2015. this is the 5905 1a which is steel with matching steel bracelet now it has become a sports watch what i really like about this model is that if we get a little bit closer you can see that the dial is a sector dial of sorts. It is separated by metallic chapter rings that are polished and bright. And then we have individual indices that overlap several of the sectors, creating a wonderful modern, primarily gold take on the classic sector dial as all of these faceted indices are gold. So are the hands at center. Now, not only is this watch automatic steel and full bracelet, but it is quite well loomed. So this is a real sports watch. Just about the only thing you can't do with this model is swim. It's got an annual calendar, Patek's original invention, created in 1996. We have an American-style calendar with the day, the date, the month. It's annual, so you only need to correct it once a year during the jump from February to March. Mono counter down at 6 o'clock, 60-minute register for the chrono. That's unusual on watches. And then you've got a little blue or silver-white aperture. When it's blue, that means we are in the date change danger zone during the nighttime hours. So for example, if you're wondering whether this is 3 a.m. or 3 p.m., take a look. See how it's dark blue? Nighttime hours. Now you know. Factory bracelet, very similar to the bracelet that you find on a bracelet-equipped Aquanaut. So if you've seen a 5167 with a bracelet, it's going to be a lot like this. Double deploying clasp, really high grade. You can see Calatrava cross outside, little elements of it inside. Twin trigger release will not pop open inadvertently. On the reverse side, caliber 28520, automatic winding, ceramic bearings, unidirectional action, column wheel, vertical clutch, flyback action, six position adjustment, and Patek Philippe says that it's a combination of six position adjustment, Patek Philippe seal, anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, and free sprung gyromax regulator system will make this watch accurate to no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day. And it has this lovely sunburst metallic green dial. 55 hours of automatic winding power reserve. I'm gonna throw this on my wrist. It's a 42 and from end link to end link across the wrist, it is 53.5 millimeters, meaning if you want something that's beefier than a 5960 with a cleaner dial, that's exactly what this is. It is a combination of brains and brawn as it is remarkably sophisticated and substantial in its presence on the wrist, but you can see not just brains and brawn, but also beauty as well, with a concave bezel that wraps all the way around and scalloped lug profiles. This is a beautiful watch. Jumping from one form of sports watch to another, let's take a look at something that I consider to be a remarkable duality of Fabulous <laughs> and fatuous. If you ever wondered about why dive watches don't have tourbillon regulators, the answer is they do. And this is the 50 Fathoms Flying Tourbillon from Blancpain. This is reference 5025, 45 millimeters in diameter in rose gold. The watch incorporates a flying tourbillon designed by Vincent Calabrese in the late 80s for Blancpain. Flying tourbillon meaning no bridge to block your view from the top of the tourbillon. You can see it has no upper bridge. What it does have is 300 meter water resistance, tons of loom, a power reserve indicator, and as you can see because of the sapphire capped bezel, you have the ability to loom up the whole 360 degrees, not just a bezel pearl. Line that up with the minute hand. Now you have your 60 minute count up timer. Flip it all over. It's finished exactly as you would expect on a Blancpain tourbillon caliber. 
five position adjustment, Anglage a mile wide, rounded and double stacked, black polished screw heads with chamfered slots and circumference. We have both polished screws on the movement itself. And then if you look on the rotor, there are some elements fixed in place by fired blue screws. So polished and blued both. Note the presence of several sizes of engine turning as well as Cote de Genève. Satination on most of the wheels. I say most because we have a lovely sunburst solarization on the barrel ratchet wheel. It is a fantastic looking movement and a watch that is simply chock-a-block with features. The strap in sailcloth and rubber held on by screws and bars, super secure, full trigger actuated double deployant clasp. And surprisingly, the watch wears quite well. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. On my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference, zoom back out, this magic machine that takes the pictures lets me do that. And the watch wears quite well on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist. If you told me an automatic winding, seven to eight day power reserve, 300 meter water resistant sports watch would fit and even sit low enough to fit underneath the sleeve, I would have said no. But again, that's the magic of the 50 fathoms. It's a big watch for an average sized wrist. So super cool right there. Now let's say you want a sporty watch that's Big, bold, red gold, but not too thick. Well, in 2007, Richard Meal answered your prayers. His clients asked for a watch they could wear with a cuff, and that's exactly what we have right here. RM16 Extra Flat, and truly it is. 8.3 millimeters thick, despite automatic winding, twin barrels, and two sapphires on the dial side. Let's do a quick loom shot. It's a loomed watch, there's no doubt about that. There's enough loom, you can actually read the numerals. Now, taking a quick look at the dial, there's a lot to love. Again, we're gonna zoom, because I don't have much room. There's a little carbon composite chapter ring that lies on the outer part of the dial, and the little luminescent indices sit on that. We have our large vertically arrayed Arabic numerals. We have a little target, sort of a backlight there, that allows you to see which of the current date you are currently viewing. So you can see right there, as I advance, the hands at center are half frosted, half polished, so they contrast nicely. And we jump from the 25th to the 26th, just like that. So you can see that skeletonized date wheel that runs all the way around the outside of the movement. And you even have a quick set mechanism. We've got blackened grade five titanium bridges and plates. You can even see the escape wheel through the dial. 8.3 millimeters thick. The watch is 50 from lug to lug and about 38 across. So it's still a big watch. It's just a very thin watch. And on the reverse side, my favorite part of the watch is how RM scalloped out the sapphire on the case back so that the rotor could sit inside the sapphire rather than having to add to the stack height of the assembly. The rotor sits inside the case back sapphire. Now you got two barrels, automatic winding, one, two, three, four points of attachment to the case, but there's a rubber elastomer like a donut on each of them. So very shock resistant. Free sprung, well, not yet. This is an early version of the watch and you can see it features among other things, an adjustable stud holder and a Vaucher star on the base plate reminding you that this movement Started life as a vow shade. It's custom made for RM. 55 hour power reserve. We have two white gold masses on the winding rotor. They can be moved in or out by your RM watchmaker so you can change the winding efficiency of the system if you want to slow it down for a super active person or speed it up for a person who works in an office like me and might be sedentary. The arc of the case fits nicely on the wrist. Remember, I told you this is a thin watch, but it's not a small watch, and you can really see that here. So if you want a thin, elegant watch that could be a dress watch, but also has a strong casual kick to it. This is a great way to go. It's not going to look teensy or tiny on your wrist. It's going to give a good account of itself, but it's also going to be super slim. No lack of grace. Okay. So I always like to have one fairly affordable watch in the show. And right now I'm really feeling this Navitimer 400 pieces, full satin brushed case and bracelet, a 2009 model year limited edition. There's a lot to love on the dial side where you've got the uh, circular slide rule calculator, and then you've got a panda dial, but look closely. It's sort of a ivory metallic or cream. It's not a cool silver white. It's a little bit warmer than that, which I really like. Now let's say we want to do some math. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know, they say never do math during a live stream or a recording, so you'll make mistakes. But I'm good at math, so I'm not too worried about this. Let's say I want to divide 70 
by 2. So I'm going to get 35, right? Okay. Well, here's how you read it. You put 70 over 2. You keep your decimals in mind. It works just like a calculator. The number on the bottom divides the number on the top. Jump over to the inner index, which is this little red 10, and then right next to it, dividing 70 by 2, I get 35, just like that. Now, let's say I want to multiply 40 by 2. So now I put the number to be multiplied over the inner index. I take a look at 2. Sure enough, there's 80. That's how you use this calculator. Do a quick loom shot. The watch is loomed. It's a lovely and muted Schneider era Breitling, 42 millimeters in diameter. It feels like something that could be made in the era before the Schneiders or the current regime after the Schneiders. They're known for bigger, bolder, brighter, Bentley, all of those things that made Breitling a bit garish and moved it out of alignment with its traditional rivals, Rolex and Omega. But this feels like a Breitling from a kinder, gentler era, the 50s, the 60s, or even the recent years where the companies moved towards smaller sizes and classicism. This is a great way to do that. And again, only 400 of these made. It is fairly scarce. Inside caliber 23, it's a Valjeux 7753 in chronometer, guys. So automatic winding, cam oscillating pinion chronograph, and a stop seconds function. Just about the only thing you don't have here is a quick set for the date because going with the 7753, you change the orientation of the 7750 to have a more balanced layout, traditional tri-compacts, but you do lose the quick set. But Breitling is smart. They remove the clutch position, the dead clutch from the crown, so you don't feel a detent where the date quick set would have been. Again, on the wrist, this watch just looks and feels tremendous. I don't think you can do much better than a Navitimer if you're going to buy an iconic Breitling, and I don't think you can do much better if you're going to buy a Navitimer than this one specifically. You can see it's got the Navitimer 7-link bracelet, all satin finished and immensely compelling. Okay, we're going to ease our way back into the crazy watches. I don't think anyone would claim that a 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe is a crazy watch, but compared to divers from, well, Breitling, Omega, and Rolex, it certainly seems to be a little bit more blue-blooded. Now, it's hard to believe that the current Bathyscaphe came out in 2013, it's already been 11 years, and this watch right here hasn't aged a day. It is smaller at 43 millimeters and thinner at 13.5 millimeters thick than a 5015, which is a standard 50 fathoms, but they are mechanically identical, both 300 meters, both 120 click bezels, and both powered by the spectacular three barrel five-day power reserve caliber 1315. Now, there's a lot going on here. You can see just how beautifully bold and broad those bevels are, the finest on any series production watch I've encountered. They also have a lovely and more modern finish across the bridges. Notice the snailing is used instead of something like Cote de Genève or Perlage. Solarization on the ratchet wheel as well as the crown wheel core. Taking a look, note the presence of three barrels under beautifully separated bridges that give you more of that awesome beveling. We have here six position adjustment, not five like a chronometer, six. Free sprung for shock resistance, aerodynamic recessed bolt, variable inertia, free sprung balance, and an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. And of course, you can see we've got a rotor with four finishes on it made of blackened gold. This watch is really bold. And you can see in steel, very versatile. Throw it on the wrist. Let's do a loom shot first because I always like to show loom on a sports watch. All three hands loomed, bezel pearl loomed, exactly how it should be. I think you should be able to know whether your diver's running in the dark. So I always love having a loomed seconds hand pin buckle, steel, very easy to fix, sail cloth, strap, rubber underside for suplex against the skin, and just a great fit. I, I think I can wear a 50-15, but my wrist is 16 centimeters. If Let's say you've got a 15 centimeter circumference wrist, but you want the same basic package, you can get this, the reference 5000 bathyscaphe, and this would fit on a wrist slightly smaller than mine. It's a really good fit too, easier to fit underneath the cuff, and the bathy always the more vintage inflected standard 50 fathoms. You can you can see a nice flat case band, minimal beveling, squared off lugs, big crown, no guards, but again, still a 300 meter diver. It doesn't lose anything, uh, technically speaking, compared to the more modern 5015. All right, let's go full crazy. We eased our way back into luxury after the Breitling. Now we shoot for the moon. In 2000, Alangu Unzona expanded its iconic Longa One collection to include a tourbillon regulator. And that's what we have right here. We have here the Longa One 
Torbjorn, 38.5 millimeters in diameter, rose gold. It was a 250-piece limited series with the first version of caliber L961. Manual wind, three-day power reserve. Notice the underside of the Torbjorn carriage and the top of the Torbjorn carriage. Not synthetic rupees, but real brilliant cut diamonds as the capstones. German silver bridges and plates. It's a nickel copper zinc alloy with the copper giving it the golden hue. Anglage a mile wide, even around the access port at the center. Notice the presence of all of that beveling plus engine turning in several sizes. Stripes, stripen, I guess. Uh, then we have freehand engraving and a sort of floral motif on the Underpinning to the tourbillon and the cock for the driving wheel, and notice that the wheel profiles with these spokes, a specific reference to East German pocket watch making and clock making during the heyday of the original Alango und Zona company. And then we have little golden chiton or cups holding the pivot jewels. They are fixed by blued screws. Note we have both polished and blued screws, both of them in the three-quarter style bridge, the last element harking back to the original pocket watch era of Longa dial made of sterling silver. We have a quick set system for the panorama datum, which fun fact was originally a JLC patent, and then a spectacular skeletonized and black polished cock for the tourbillon regulator. We've got a pin buckle for quick adjustments. That's not uncommon at Longa, where even flagship complications often come with a classical dress watch pin buckle. Easy watch to wear despite three days of power reserve, a big date mechanism, and a tourbillon. Easy. Flat, flush. If your wrist is as small as 14 centimeters circumference, game on. Now jumping straight into something out of this world, I do think it's important to acknowledge that there are many standards of style at Debitune. There is the classicism of something like the DB8 or the DB25. There is the quirkiness of the Dreamwatch series, which could be anything you want because it's full custom. Then there's the DB28, which we have here, which is the bedrock of the brand. It's Aiguido back in 2011, basically best picture at the Oscars of watchmaking. Ten years later, Debitune launched this, the DB28 XP, still 43 millimeters in diameter in grade 5 titanium, still a manual wind 6-day power reserve, still variable geometry spring-loaded floating lugs, but now much thinner. They were never thick watches to begin with, but here 8.7 millimeters thick. You can see the company uses engine turning to create this micro light pattern around the edge of the case, and a Debitune cases, dials, and movements all made in house. Now, the reason I didn't wind it is because I want you to see the titanium and white gold balance, and this is proprietary, patented in 2016. It's one of 10 balances created by watchmaker and founding partner Denis Flageolet for Debitune. He remains firmly in control of watchmaking and creation today. So it's a very personality-driven brand, very intimate, very personal, very connected to the collectors who love the brand. And those people always have immediate access to people like myself, Denis, CEO Pierre Jacques. When you're part of the Debitune family, and I should mention we do own Debitune here at Watchbox, but if you question my motives, go back to 2016 when I shot my first Debitune watch, you'll hear a voice rife with wonder and awe, and it continues. Look how much black polishing we have here. All of this finished with a diamond paste. Look at the micro right engraving on the base plate cap. The micro light right here you can see is a wonderful ripple-like concentric pattern. And then we have tears on the edge of the deltoid bridge. You can see that the balance on a bridge that is rounded and black polished. And we have one, two, three shock protection springs patented. Twin self-adjusting barrels patented. Six days of reserve, you cannot accidentally overwind it. The hairspring profile is patented. You have no fewer than six patents protecting the technologies in this watch. If you wanna know where the money goes at Debitune, it goes into the products. Now, the case back here is fairly simple. To make the watch thinner, the case back is solid. But that's not a problem because all the action is on the dial side. Finish with no compromise and wonderful dial depth, which you can really see in profile. Note the drilled dimple style minute track with the orbs of polished grade 5 titanium acting as the hours. The balance in blue and the hands in blue fired titanium. All right. This might be the greatest two-hand watch made in the modern era. 
launched in 2017 and made in two flights, one of 38 pieces, one of 28 pieces. This is the F. Pigeon Chronomet Holland and Holland, a collaboration with Holland and Holland, the high-end gunsmiths of England who carry a royal warrant. The idea here is that we have the 39 millimeter stainless steel profile of something like a chronomet bleu, but whereas the bleu is tantalum, this is steel, and whereas the bleu is a three-hander with small seconds, this is two hands. A case, a dial, and yes, even a movement made expressly for this model. You can see how this version of caliber 1304 is engraved Holland and Holland with the ampersand right in the center. Solid gold movement, 18 carat bridges and plates, two barrels in series, I believe, to provide 56 hours of power reserve, but with a super flat torque curve, free sprung, large inertia balance, six position adjusted, one more than a standard chronometer. The finish speaks for itself. The case is steel, so quite practical. And this was case 1382, which yielded 38 watches. And by case, I should say barrel. It was a cut Holland and Holland Damascus steel barrel. And if you look carefully, you can see that there are horizontal planks of the steel that have been cut flat, laid out, and built like the planking of the deck of a ship to craft the circular dial from the rolled pieces of the barrel. And you can really see that seam just below the hands. Now the hands, as well as the printing here, they're all cream off-white for a nice warm, subtle contrast with the dial. You do get a full deployment clasp, which is unusual on Jorn watches because they tend to come with pin buckles like Longa, even on flagship complications. Not only is this a folding clasp as standard on a Jorn watch, but but it is a matching stainless steel clasp. And if you know Jorn, you know that steel is exceptionally rare, in general, only for very special editions and for chiming watches for sonic purposes. This is my all-time favorite FP Jorn watch. And that's surprising to me because I normally like high complications. Coming in a close second would be something like a black label Chronomet Optimum. But for sure aesthetics, I choose this. Finally, and I always try to end with the watch I find most spectacular. We take Laurent Ferrier's greatness for granted, and I think that's wrong. I think Ferrier deserves the same waiting list you find at Debatune and F.P. Journ, and here's why. This is the company's original product, launched in 2012. This was originally called the Galet Classic. Today it's called the Classic Tourbillon. But what makes this one really special is that not only do we have here a white gold case, and the case is a robust 41 millimeters, but we have an onyx mirrored black dial, mirrored black onyx. That's what it's made of. And you can see super subtle tourbillon double spiral, a watch with an ultra high-end, high-class case back treatment of the tourbillon regulator. Look at this asymmetrical bridge, a nod to the past. Look at the quality of the Anglage, as good as anything you'll find this side of Grubel Forcy and Romain Gautier. And you can see that the tourbillon assembly itself, beautifully made, with two horizontally opposed hairsprings. The idea being that they are symmetrical and directly opposite, so when, due to the effects of gravity, one runs fast, the other, by an equal and opposite margin, will run slow. With the double spiral, and six position adjustment and free sprung architecture, we have here a tourbillon that is not just beautiful, but a genuine advancement in the cause of chronometric precision. There's a lot to love. We have a vintage pocket watch inspired polished round click, the click and its spring, effectively one large part. Take a look underneath, satin finished, circular brushed, ratchet wheel on top of a solarized barrel, 80 hours of manual wind power reserve, and you can see that every jewel and screw sink has been beveled just like the edges of the bridges, and we have a steel bridge for the tourbillon. Look at these interior angles executed inside the confines of a skeletonized steel component, and they are all razor sharp. Finally, and this is one of my favorite parts, you can see here a decidedly upscale set of Geneva waves. Look at how the shading changes as I move through the light. That is emblematic of the best Geneva waves, by far the best. They have a color and a gradient and almost a chatoyancy to them, making them seem three-dimensional and dynamic. These are anything but common stripes, and these are anything but common screws. You can also see little details, like on each side of the 
bridge for the tourbillon, as well as on the center wheel bridge, you can see the locating pegs that help locate the structures on their mounts. Those have been black polished on their tops. Laurent Ferrier represents the ultimate in value and sophistication in dress watches today. Someday, people will recognize these watches the way we today recognize 1989 to 1994 Daniel Roth watches, or perhaps 1995 to 2000 Roger Dubuis. This will be in that echelon of collectability, but for now, it's a best kept secret. If you love these watches, please reach out to me. I am T. Mosso with thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.